So guys, this is my Dyson DC-07 All Floors that I have fully refurbished all by myself. As you can see, it's in immaculate condition and it's now as good as it'll ever look. A lot of the parts have been replaced to make it look like and work like a US Dyson. So this sticker right here showing that it's a DC-07 Group Cyclone sticker and why it's so great. Along with this sticker as well, saying it's the first vacuum that doesn't lose suction with the Dyson logo on it. It's also got a clutch on it now because the UK version of this exact colour scheme had no clutch and also a round brush bar which has now got a helix brush bar. Now the difference is this brush bar, yes it's the same as the UK clutch Dyson design of brush bar except the bristles are a lot stiffer than the UK ones. Along with the sole plate opening being a few inches wider so you get better carpet lines with this and also the front of the self-adjusting head tells you that it has automatic carpet height adjustment. Although they should have said floor adjustment because it's not just on carpets, is it? It adjusts itself to hard floors as well. So I don't know why they said just carpet. And also the US versions have a larger lip on the front, which sticks out substantially more than the UK models. And that's basically all there is to the cleaner head design of the US DC-07. On the US DC-07s, right in front of the motor housing, it would have a British Allergy Foundation sticker showing you that it's a HEPA model. This one hasn't got a HEPA filter in it at the moment, but for some reason in the US, all Dysons had a HEPA filter as standard. In the UK, a lot of the basic DC-07s like the Origin and the All Floors had just pad filters, so that's a bit unusual. I don't know why they did that, but yeah, here's a filter. It's a brand new genuine filter, as you can see. It's also had a brand new hose on the back as well, which I'll show you later. But yeah, as you can see, it's fully clean. It's had a polish as well. So it's basically as new as it looks. And you can see right in there, it's nice and, well, it's almost clean. It's quite difficult to reach it down in there and fully clean up the edges. But yeah, it's as good as it gets. This seal's a little bit dumb, so I need to just give that a wipe down. But yeah, I polished even the base of the bin flap, as you can see. The whole entire bin, inside and outside, cleaned up the seals and everything, literally all the way around the vacuum and even polished the sides of the cleaner head as well. So it's sparkling, as you can see. It looks marvellous, doesn't it? Now on the side of the switch housing, you've got the UK helpline sticker, but on the US DTO7s, it would be a picture of this angle of the vacuum labeling that this is your wand release, this is your power switch, this is your cyclone release catch. And this little hook right here is to empty the bin, like so. For some reason, we didn't get that sticker. It's just exclusive to the US Dysons. And I've even changed the cable on it to have a two pin plug, as you can see. So that's cool as well. Turn this hook right here to release the entire cable. I'm gonna show you the hose now. So you press on this catch, the whole handle lifts out with the hose. This hose is brand new, as you can see. So that's literally got no dust in it at all. Press that. And then you can remove the wand and attach your desired tool of choice. So you've got the crevice tool, which is conveniently stored on the wand and attach that. It's a friction fit, so there's no clips. So yeah, you can just use that. The stair tool right over here, clips into the side and also your dusting brush. Now, both the stair tool and the dusting brush right here, they have a swivel neck, so you can just angle it at whatever different angles you want. So for example, you can have that dusting brush straight so you can reach all the way up to reach the cobwebs or just have it angled for handheld cleaning, just like that. And same with the stair tool, so you can have it at a 90 degree angle or even a 45 degree angle. So let's pop these tools back in. Another thing I really like about these older Dysons is how you can just take them apart to many pieces without the use of any tools. So you saw how the one comes off by pressing on this catch right here and the whole entire handle lifts out. Press the brightly colored button to remove the holes from the wand. So there's your wand separated, put that aside. There's a little tab right here, you just pull on that and then you can lift the hose out. And there you go, that's your hose separated from the machine. You've also got a valve pipe on the side, so you press these two buttons. You can lift out this 90 degree bend to check for any blockages. And the U-bend as well can be unclipped, which is a complete U-turn. So anything could be blocked in there. It's common for pencils to be stuck in here. So I've seen a lot of those. Filter access by pressing this brightly coloured catch. The filter is accessible, so you can just separate the foam from the filter cage itself, both of which are washable. You've even got instructions on the side telling you how to wash it and how not to dry it and how not to clean it. Let it dry, pop it back into the vacuum when you're done. 
There's a picture of a tap or a faucet on there showing you that you should wash it and you should wash it every six months because this thing, <laughs> it requires very little maintenance. That's how good the cyclones were on these older Dysons. Remove the cyclone right here, put on this hoop to undo the bin flap. And this little handle has a release catch, so you just push on that. That allows you to separate your whole entire dirt bin from the cyclone. And on the bottom of the vacuum, we've got these three plastic screws, which you can turn a quarter of a turn. So once you do that, you can remove the entire sole plate, like so, and check the brush bar even further and clean out any hairs. And you can also clean out the sole plate as well. And finally, this small internal hose right here can be pulled off and then you need to untwist it from the other end and then you can give that a wash as well. And that's literally how easy it is to take the vacuum apart just for cleaning. Yes, with the sole plate, I did need a instrument or a tool. You can use a coin as well, but it's so easy to remove. It's literally just effortless. Now watch me put this thing back together really rapidly. Turn the three screws, that's done. Internal hose just twists on, pop it into the other end. That's securely fitted. Put your cyclone and bin back together. It just clips into place with a secure little lock on the back as well, which you align first. Close your bin flap, put that back on the vacuum. Your valve pipe goes on the side, clips into place. Your U-bend goes on the base as well until it clicks into place. As does the hose, it just slides down until it clicks into place. Slide the wand into the hose, push the wand home, locks into place. That's not coming up until you press that button. Your filter goes in the housing right here. And there you are, that's your vacuum fully assembled after being cleaned. This is why I love DCR 7s they're just such beautiful machines. They look quite futuristic for the time and they just have really strong suction. They have a huge bin, they have a bin flap as well, which makes it easy to empty. They're easy to take apart, easy to put back together and they're just all around nice machines. Now let's plug the vacuum in and show you it running. Now this Dyson does have a 120 volt motor as well to finish off the machine. I could have left a 240 volt motor in there, but the thing is, right, because these brushes are so stiff and it's a combination of that, the wider sole plate, which lets the, you know, the brush bar dig in a bit more and the powerful suction of the UK motor at 240 volts, they have slightly higher air wattage at around, somewhere around 290 air watts up until 330 air watts or something like that. The early DCR7s had 330 air watts, so they're quite a bit more significantly powerful compared to the 120 watt versions. But because of the combination of the two, the clutch can't handle it and therefore it grinds the gears. So I had to put a less powerful motor in here so the brush bar can spin properly with the clutch. Because I don't like these clutches, they kill a lot of the torque and the gears in here grind when there's too much resistance on the brush bar. Right, we've got a brand new looking clear bin. The whole vacuum's clean. I'm gonna switch it on now. It's a bit quieter than the UK DCO 7s but I'm gonna show you how much it picks up. We're gonna see how much it picks up anyways because I have vacuumed with the Bosch Athlete over here a few hours ago, so I don't expect it to pick up much, but we'll see anyways. So switch it on. <laughs> So as you can see, it's not really picked up much at all. There's a bit of fine dirt in here. So let's open the bin up and see what's in here. So we've got some fluff, a decent amount of fine dirt, as you can see. There's quite a bit of grit in there as well. So it's not done too bad for a vacuum that's cleaning a carpet, which has been vacuumed prior to it a few hours ago with a cordless. That's actually a really good cordless vacuum, by the way. It is pretty powerful. So that's the Dyson DCO7 All Fours Vacuum. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to support my channel, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, and click on the bell icon to be notified every time I upload a new video. I'm your host, Power 786 signing out. I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.